Recap in minutes. Today we will be going through a war, drama, and action movie from 2019, called, Leaving Afghanistan. There will be spoilers ahead in this video, so chill out and enjoy. The movie opens with a military van traversing the rugged plains of Afghanistan. The soldiers inside listen to a radio announcement, stating that the Soviet Union is withdrawing from Afghanistan to facilitate a peaceful resolution. They arrive at a truck stop, where two groups of Afghans are in a heated argument with the Soviet soldiers, accusing each other of theft. Meanwhile, the Lieutenant Karlamov received the staff from the van. He briefs the comrade Major Dmitrich that the Afghan caravan was heading from coast to Herat, and then Iran, they stopped and searched them, and now they are yelling that the money is gone. They meet their tribe leader who says they stole the money and broke his nose. The Major asks Karlamov did he search his men. He confirms to him that he searched his men twice but could not find the money. The Major asks Sergeant Lariak what is in the canister, he throws it away saying that it is not theirs. Now the caravan leader comes to the Major and complains about the money, and the Major replies by saying that they should go to the police. There they make an inventory of the goods to find who is guilty. When the Major says police station, the caravan leader yells at him saying that they are not going anywhere. Now they all pack their luggage and move from there. They suspect that they are carrying heroin, that's why they rush to go from there. Volodya calls Uzbek back in the van and they go from there. The Major tells them in the van that the money was in the canister. And he did not expose them thinking that the boys deserve to earn something, as the war is ending. Meanwhile, Karlamov also found out that Lariak had stolen the money. After some time, a son and a father are seen walking on a trail in a forest. They hear a distant explosion in the hills. A Soviet jet flies over their heads while escaping the attack but gets it later. The boy runs to the crash site, as he sees the pilot coming out of the jet. When he reaches there, he finds the pilot's gun, holds him at gunpoint, and threatens him to not move. The pilot tries to be frank with him, telling him his name is Alexander. He also throws his pistol away, politely asking his name. Meanwhile the militants, Mujahideen, who attacked his plane come there and their leader snatches the gun from the boy, knocks the pilot down, and takes him away. While on the other hand, Comrade Major and his men reach the site of the explosion near Salong Pass. Volodya informs him that militant engineer Hashim controls the pass, and this is the third attack on their caravan this week, and now they have destroyed their food caravan. He says he will ruin their food supply. They gather the bodies of their army men and go to the base. The next day, the general and other staff get the briefing about the attack on the jet. They point out an area where the pilot had catapulted. General Vasilyev takes Major Dmitrich away and tells him that the pilot is his son, and that he wants him to be saved at all costs. He orders him to take the best team and do his best to find his son. The next moment, Lareak along with his man and sergeant went to the local bazaar. Sergeant Abdusalamov bargains to buy the tape recorder and he pays the money. When they get ready to go from the shop, the troops from the special unit enter the shop, snatch their things and scold them for not fighting on the Salong Pass. One of them goes to a lieutenant named Greek, who is sitting quietly in the corner having breakfast. He asks for his help to stop the special service troops. He gets up, goes to the troops, and asks them to give their shopping back. When he refuses, they get into an intense hand-to-hand -hand fight. When they fall outside of the shop, Lariak's lieutenant notices them and whistles them to stop. He gets impressed by the Greek's tough fight and offers him to join his reconnaissance unit. Greek accepts his offer. After some time they are on the hillside, traveling to the base. Soon Lieutenant Karlamov receives orders to turn and go to the area of Kishlok, where the pilot has ejected. Greek says that the area is under the command of Engineer Hoshem's command. The other one reminds him that they have promised no combat, because the Soviets are leaving under the Geneva Accords. They think this is a general assignment to find a pilot so they head to the coordinated region. Later on, they reach a village in the Kishlok region. The villagers have gone, and the militants of Hashem's group have captured the area. They trap Karlamov's infantry unit and start attacking them. They ambush their patrolling parties and shoot their men, but when the infantrymen see the militants, they kill them with grenades. Militants fire with the rocket launcher and injure Lieutenant Greek. They fire mortars, injure and scatter the infantrymen. One militant holds them firing with the machine gun, and Lariak runs to get the sword from the dead body of a militant, meanwhile, one of them takes the chance and kills the gunman. Lieutenant Greek appears behind three gunners who shot mortars at their vehicle, he gets shocked to see his men die, and he gathers his consciousness and kills them. After that, they check the houses and they find the pilot's mask in one. Lieutenant Karlamov assesses that they have taken the pilot into the mountains. After some time, Major Dmitrich and Volodya meet a Tajik, Zmirai, and make a contract with him to betray Hoshem and help them cross the Salong Pass. 
He demands 5 million Afghan currency and makes a settlement. He takes Volodya's jacket from the mannequin and leaves. Major thinks of a rehearsal plan to arrange the truck full of mannequins and go on the road to the pass. The next day, Zmirai and his jihadi men destroy the trucks to show that they have taken the infidels out on the road. The Major gives him the money and asks him to be ready for the action later. The next moment, the Major discusses this plan with the General. But the advisor of the General rejects his plan. Meanwhile, a local broker comes to Sergeant Abdusalamov and asks him to sell the grenade launcher. Abdusalamov sets a high price of 1 million Afghanis. The broker agrees and comes with the buyers the next day. He briefs them about the launcher, takes the money, and says he will give the launcher tomorrow. When the broker comes the next day and asks for Abdusalamov, the guard threatens him to run from there. At night, they call Abdusalamov at a shop and kidnap him from there. They take him to their house in the hills, burn his uniform and give him a local dress, and kick him into a dungeon. There he meets another prisoner but does not recognize him. He asks him who he is but he does not say anything, just keeps making the toy boat. While back on the base, the Major and his man Volodya have known about the abduction of the sergeant. They come to Majed, who has caught the broker, he interrogates him and he says he has given Abdusalamov to the Sardar, who is one of the bodyguards of Hoshem. The Major says this is the unique chance to get to Hoshem. They go to see the bodyguard and offer him to pay the amount to get the pilot and the sergeant. He says he will discuss the proposal with Hoshem and leave. On their way back to the base, the van driver steps out of the van, supposedly to relieve himself. However, unexpectedly, a mortar strikes the van, causing a powerful explosion. Hoshem's militia launches an ambush, engaging them in a fierce gunfight. The attackers had intended to capture them alive, but fortunately, a timely rescue by a Soviet military vehicle saves them. The Soviet soldiers fire back at the militants, driving them off. In the aftermath of the attack, they suspect that Uzbek might have betrayed their location to the militants. Majed takes it upon himself to confront Uzbek that night and successfully captures him. Meanwhile, back in Sardar's area, he discovers the mannequins and calls Zmirai, accusing him of betrayal. He shows him the mannequins and asks him why he betrayed him. He asks the prisoners to come out and see what he is going to do. He cuts his throat in front of them. The following day, at the Soviet's base, Major seeks permission from the general to negotiate with Hoshem for his son's safe return. The general's assistant warns that the mission might be a trap, and presents the severed head of Zmirai as evidence of the danger. Despite the risks, Dimitrich insists on leading the rescue mission, determined to bring his son back alive. Eventually, the general permits him to proceed to get his son back alive. On the other side, engineer Hoshem Sardar issues orders to prepare the prisoners for exchange. The captives are taken to the river for a bath, during which Alexander manages to cut his rope using a knife and makes a daring escape by swimming away. Although a militant chases after him, Alexander successfully evades his pursuer. However, as he reaches the other bank of the river, he encounters the same boy who had confronted him in the mountains. Tragically, the boy shoots and kills Alexander with his pistol. At night, Dimitrich and his men arrive at the bridge for the prisoner exchange, Sardar's man comes to him and says the pilot is shot by an 11-year-old kid mistakenly. They grieve his death but Sardar's man offers a gesture of peace. He assures them that they will be allowed to pass the Salong Pass without resistance, and asks for two men to accompany them as a guarantee that there will be no attacks or bombings from the air. Volodya and Greek offer themselves voluntarily to go with them as the guarantee. They step forward, fully aware of the risks involved but determined to ensure a peaceful withdrawal of their troops. While at the base, the general anxiously waits for them to bring his son's body. His assistant reminds him that he had previously warned about Hoshem being a treacherous man. Filled with anger and grief at the sight of his deceased son, the general laments that his only child is gone, and he vows that those responsible will face a heavy price for their actions. The next day, Sardar brings a TV at his home, and they watch that the Russian troops have begun withdrawal from the Salong Pass freely. Lieutenant Greek and Volodya rejoice that their people are heading out from the dangerous area. Lieutenant asks him to go now, but Volodya says they will not let them go for the next four hours. He explains that they are there as the guarantee from the Soviets, that there will be no air raid on them while getting out of Hoshem's land. They push them again back into the dungeon. Moments later, as the Soviet air forces began evacuating the area, they flew over Sardar's village and unleashed bombs indiscriminately, disregarding Lieutenant Greek and Volodya's presence. Miraculously, the two managed to escape the explosions, crawling out from the ruins in an attempt to cross the pass. Suddenly, a hidden assailant took a shot at them. In response, Greek swiftly fired back, and he ended up killing the shooter, who happened to be the very same boy responsible for the pilot's death. Having escaped the village, they trekked through the hills toward the other side of the pass. 
Along the way, Volodya shared a story about when he first met engineer Hoshem. He recounted how the engineer asked him why they had come to Afghanistan, and he answered that they were there to build socialism. Now, after all these years of conflict and loss, Volodya found himself pondering the same question, why had they truly come to this land? After a considerable journey, they finally reached their base. Lieutenant Greek approached Karlamov and confessed that he had killed a boy, whose small hands haunt his conscience. He expresses remorse over taking a life, but Karlamov reminds him that it was the same boy who shot General's son. The next day, the general gathers all the soldiers, officers, and other staff on the base grounds. He expresses gratitude for their service, sacrifices, and endurance. He instructs the unit commanders to prepare for departure. After his speech, Dmitrich approaches him and asks why he ordered the attack even after the withdrawal. The general explains that he received orders from Moscow, but Dmitrich reveals that he only sought revenge against a young boy who killed his son. The general says it is the war and the boys die in the war, nothing new happened. One should start a war only if he is sure he can win. Dmitrich questions why they are leaving if they have indeed won, and the general responds that it's because of advisors like him. The movie ends when Greek lies on the bench, the troops burn all the top secret papers, and their informant, Majed approaches Dmitrich and presents him with a beautiful carpet as a farewell gift, a token of their friendship and alliance and he leaves for the mountains with his son. As the departure time neared, Dmitrich, Greek, and their squadron, who were among the last to leave Afghanistan, boarded a waiting helicopter. They are seen going out, flying last time through the air of Afghanistan. Thank you for watching, please subscribe recap in minutes for more videos like this, and help the channel grow.